Hey everyone, so I just wanted to make this video talking about some tips for your surgery rotation. Again, rotations can be different across different hospitals, but this is my experience that I had on surgery and things that hopefully can help you guys across your surgery rotation. So surgery was actually my first rotation, so I had no idea how anything worked. So it was a, I had to learn how to be on rotations as well as learn how to be on a surgery rotation. Surgeons like very, very quick presentations. I did not know how to present before third year. And so they basically wanted to know like a very quick summary of the patient and just how they were doing overall. So things that you always had to ask the patient is, were they able to pee and poop? Were they able to pass gas? And were they experiencing any pain? And those were things that my attending or my resident would want to know. So always make sure to go in and ask your patients that. Some of them didn't, I feel like sometimes they didn't even care about heart and lungs, but I would just listen to the heart and lungs to be, just in case some patients or residents didn't care about listening to bowel sounds, but always palpating was super important. So just ask your resident to show you the first couple days how they like their presentations done and what kind of exam they want you guys to do. But for us, it was very curt. I know that like even for the vitals of the patient, I had a resident that just says that wanted me to say just vital signs were stable overall if there was nothing out of the ordinary. And then another that wanted ranges for like the heart rate, the blood pressure. So just figure out what your resident wants. And then it can even, when you're presenting to your attending, it can be different. Um, so just basically figure out what your residents and attendings want. Just ask from the get-go, how do you like your presentations? What do you want me to get done? Be as useful as you can to them. Help with writing notes if possible. Just do what you can to help write notes. I personally liked being able to contribute a little just because it made me feel like I was a part of the team. And when you're in the OR, the most that you really have to do is just kind of look up stuff about the surgery. Um, in gen surge, you really should know about like gallbladders, appendicitis stuff, pancreas, um, colon, that's a big thing. So a book that was really good for that that people bring up to use is Surgical Recall. Um, you can get a PDF or get a copy, like a hard copy, and just look at the relevant sections before you're about to go into a surgery. And most likely that'll help you with any pimping questions that you have to go through. My surgery rotation actually wasn't very bad about pimping, so I never felt like I was being harassed, but I know it can be bad at some schools. So just be prepared, you know, anatomy is always huge. So try and look at some videos of laparoscopic procedures, try and look at netter, just get the anatomy down and then look at surgical recall and try and study whenever you can on downtime because your days are so long. Like I would have days where I would be at the hospital from 4 a.m. to 7 p.m., which I, I mean, that's long to me, but maybe some people have it longer. But whenever you have downtime, just study. So a book that people really like to use is this book, Pistana. Um, I recommend it. I think it's just like, it's like 180 questions or something like that. And you just put it in your white coat. It actually fit in my scrub pocket. And so whenever I'd had downtime, I would just do the questions. It's definitely not sufficient for the shelf, but it can be helpful. Another book that people tended to like was this surgery, NMS surgery case book. So I would bring that with me everywhere. I left it in an OR multiple times. So don't try and lose your book, write your name in it. But yeah, this was like a little more in depth for the procedures. So maybe it'd be better. I just like would skip through the parts that were a little too in depth because the surgery shelf has a lot of internal medicine in it. And so if you can get that done before you do your surgery shelf, that'd be great. If not, it's not the end of the world, but there's a lot of medicine on the shelf. So they're not gonna ask you like, what is the third step in like a cholecystectomy, but they're gonna ask you like about medications and things like that. So you can use that. Also a book that, which was really great that our course director wanted us to read was De Virgilio. It's this big, massive blue book. And we actually had to do that for the course. But I've also seen on Reddit and a bunch of other sources that they recommend using that book. And it's very big, but it's not that dense. 
And so I liked using that. I'm really glad that our professor um, or our attending or person just told us to use that book. Um, also use UWorld when you can. Don't just do the surgery section. Do internal medicine. Do GI, renal, um, cardio maybe even, respiratory because that stuff will come up on the shelf. And I used Anki cards to go along with it. Um, use the NBMEs. That's definitely, use the NBMEs practice exams for every shelf. I think they even just came out with, with them recently for family medicine. I don't think they used to have that. So use it for everything. Um, do questions when you can. Online meta, it's also pretty good. Um, but just don't neglect the medicine portion because it's not just a surgery shelf. Um, yeah, so no, and then back to like what you need to know about your patient. Like just track your patient, just make sure to know the ins and outs of your patient, like, I mean, actually ins and outs, like I would be asked about like how much they were getting oral feedings and their urine output, if they were stooling and how many times. Um, talk to the nurses. Nurses are really great. Like there were so many times when I would just ask the nurse about the patient, just be very polite to them, be very respectful. And I'd say, you know, I'm the med student, is there anything you want me to tell the residents or the attendings? And they would tell me things that I would not have caught on my own. And they're the ones who are with the patients overnight, so they're a great resource to use. I recommend always talking to the nurses about your patients because they know them pretty well. Um, that's about it. Try to survive on surgery. My hours were really bad. I know even within my group, my rotation group, there are people who are on teams that were a little slower and they would get out before me, and that's okay. But just try and um, survive when you can. Make sure to eat. Keep snacks with you in your pockets. Um, learn to scrub. Um, learn how to, you know, get gown and glove properly. Get that stuff down the first week. You know, make all the mistakes you can in the first week because everyone's going to understand it's your first week. But when you're on like week six or seven, you just don't know how to scrub or you're messing up on like gowning and gloving. It's not going to look the best. So just try and get that stuff down. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The most, you can't really do that much as a med student. You're not going to hurt anyone, but if you can like, you know, show that you're trying and making the effort to learn, then that's huge. Um, learning to suture. They have suture kits and stuff. For me, honestly, the best way for me to learn was to learn on a person. And that was, you know, because you have to have your gloves in, on and it's just different to me, you know, like the feel of human flesh and skin versus, you know, trying to practice on a banana, which is what people told me to do. So just ask to do things. And if you show enthusiasm, people will let you do things, hopefully. And I think suturing is just like a good skill to have. Practice your knot tying. Um, that you can do just like whenever you're sitting around, just get some string or anything and just practice knot tying until it's just second nature to you. And that's a huge thing. If you can show that you can knot tie, single hand tie or two hand tie, like that's very great. So try to practice that too. That's definitely something you can do at home. And then just study when you can, eat when you can, try and take care of yourself, try and sleep as much as you can. Surgery is definitely, can be a trying rotation, but I really enjoyed it. So I hope that this helped. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Okay, thanks.